All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can add a data pack to your Minecraft world or server. So adding a data pack is a pretty straightforward process, but still, I've been getting some questions about it, so why not cover it? I'm going to cover everything you need to know about data packs, how to add them, how to download them. Before we start, it would mean a ton if you could leave a like. Also, check if you're subscribed to the channel. It would help me out a lot. It actually would. And then, without any further ado, let's dive right into it. So the first thing you want to do to add a data pack to a Minecraft world is actually downloading a data pack. Now what data pack you want to install is completely up to you. For the purpose of this video I'm gonna use TerraLive because it's a very very great and well known data pack. It looks absolutely amazing and it's getting an update very very soon. So we're gonna install TerraLive. For those of you who don't really know what data packs do, data packs alter your Minecraft world. So they will mostly change the way your world looks. As far as I know data packs can't add any Minecraft items. It's also nothing like a mod, it will just change the behavior of your world a little bit. So TerraLive for example is a Minecraft data pack that completely alters the look of the entire world. So it creates new biomes, I think it also has a new world height, but it doesn't add a single block. So after downloading your data pack from whatever website, I shall leave the link to TerraLive in the description of this video, but after downloading whatever data pack you want, drag it to your desktop and it should be a zip file. So in my case it says TerraLive version blah 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 dot zip. You don't need to unzip it or unpack it or anything like that, you can just leave it like this, this is your data pack. Now in this case you have two options, or you can just add the data pack to an already existing world, or you can create a new world with the data pack. I would highly recommend creating a new world with the data pack, because if you're going to add data pack to an already existing world then the world could kind of crash or look really weird because a part of the world has already been generated and the most of the things that are going to be added because of the data pack are generation related so you have a world where a part has already been loaded in but then you're going to load something in above that and it could kind of be crashy I'm going to show you how to do it anyway, but I wouldn't recommend it. So we're just going to single player, I'm going to create a new world. We're going to call it New Terra Live. There we go. I'm going to put it on game mode creative just for the purpose of this video. You don't have to do that, of course. Then you will go to data packs. So over here on the right, you have a button that says data packs. Just click on it. And after that, you will see all the data packs that are available right now. Zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on open pack folder. And after doing that, you should get a completely empty folder like this. The only thing we're going to do now is drag the terralift.zip file inside just like that then we will go back in game and now under available you will see TerraLive. so we're gonna click on this arrow it will put it to selected so TerraLive is selected now then we're gonna click on done it will load for a second and after that we are ready to create the world so just click on create new world it will give this message always when you add a data pack it will give this message worlds using experimental settings are not supported blah 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 something can go wrong we're just gonna proceed, it's TerraLive, it's safe, we know that. Now, it could take a while before it actually starts generating, because of course, this is not a normal micro generation. It's a whole different kind of generation. Everything in the game will work a little different, so it can also take a while before it actually starts generating. Like you can see, it's also very, very slow, but it will get the job done, eventually. And after a while, there we go. Hello, thank you for installing TerraLive. You are randomly teleported to ensure a proper random world spot. All right, so here we freaking go. We're in TerraLift, the Minecraft data pack that makes everything look amazing. Okay, here you got a giant tree already. Look at that. I love this data pack. I should really, really do a survival series in here. That would be so great. Okay, so TerraLift is installed on a brand new world. Now, let's say you would want to install a data pack on a already existing world. TerraLift is not a data pack that you would want to install on an already existing world. Like, don't do that. Don't do it. But let's say you have another world and another data pack and you can actually add the data pack to a world. It won't have any negative consequences. Then there is a way to do it. So my world selection list is a giant mess. Don't look at it. But over here on top we have the world we just created with TerraLife in it. Now over here we have a new world. 
one of many, that actually does not have TerraLive on it. So what you want to do to add TerraLive or whatever data pack you want to this map is click on edit. And after that, we're going to open the world folder. So the second button, open world folder. After doing that, you will get this list with tons of stuff. It might seem a little bit complicated, but believe me, it's not, it's easy. You just wanna look for a folder that says data packs. Double click on it and you can see that there's nothing inside. What we can do now is just drag TerraLive inside. There we go. We're going back in game. We're gonna click on save. And after that, we can just launch this world. So we don't have to select anything in game, we can just launch the world. It will give this message. When it gives this message, you know that TerraLive has been successfully installed to this already existing world. I know what I'm doing. Of course I know, I'm a Minecraft professional. I hope, I actually have no clue what's gonna happen. I don't think it was a good idea to install TerraLive on an already existing Minecraft world, but you know, you can do it. There is a way to do it. Here we go. Okay, I will be randomly teleported, but you can very clearly see that this is indeed TerraLive. It has been successfully installed on this Minecraft world. It was an already existing Minecraft world, and now it has TerraLive on it. Now, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you have another data pack that doesn't alter how the world looks so much, then it might be a good idea. It might be fun. Looking freaking epic though, my god. Now, let's say you want to play a data pack together with friends. So TerraLive, for example, I'm just gonna keep using the TerraLive example. You wanna play TerraLive, together with a friend. Then you will need to add TerraLift to a Minecraft server. Now, how are we gonna do that? Well, that will actually be very, very simple. After you've set up a Minecraft server, it can be a Spigot server, it can be a vanilla Minecraft server, it doesn't matter. You will always have a folder called World. The only difference is that in Spigot or Paper servers, you will have three folders. You will have World, World Nether and World End. In the normal vanilla Minecraft server, you will only have the normal World folder and the World Nether and World End will actually be in there. At least the last time I made a vanilla Minecraft server that was the case, that has been a few years ago, so things might have changed. I'm not gonna check it, I don't care. You should make a Paper or Spigot server anyway. So this is my Paper server. We're gonna click on World. Also, just like with the single player map, you will see a folder called data packs. Just double click on it and we're gonna drag TerraLive inside. Now because the folder world already exists, that means that there's already a world. Because like you've played on it probably or you've at least booted up your server for the very first time. That's the reason why this world exists and that's the reason why the data packs folder is here in the first place. Now from now on you can do two things or you can just launch your server and start playing. If you do that, then you will have the same scenario as adding TerraLive or whatever data pack to an already existing Minecraft world. You've created a world with normal Minecraft generation and later you added a data pack to it, in my case TerraLive. So if we start a Minecraft server right now, it will be the same scenario. What I would recommend doing is actually resetting the world. But of course we don't want to delete this whole folder. That would also delete TerraLive. So we're just going to clear every single file here except for the data packs folder. So everything needs to be gone. There we go. OneDrive is giving me a warning. I don't care. There it is. Now we have a folder called world with only a data packs folder inside and that actually has TerraLive. So now we're gonna restart the server. Then we're going to multiplayer direct connection, my local host server of course, because the server is hosted on my own PC. If you're hosting your server somewhere else, then just go to the IP address and there we go freaking go. Can I go to game mode one? I can. I do have perms. It's not very TerraLive like yet, but that will come in a second. I hope. There we go. TerraLive. It's very clearly TerraLive. On a Minecraft server. We on the server. And we have a big TerraLive forest here. The world looks amazing, of course. Ooh, look at these. This is also a great biome. This is not in regular Minecraft. Right? No, I'm sure it isn't. But it looks so great. TerraLive on the server. You can now play TerraLive with your friends on a Minecraft server. It is freaking great. Anyways, guys, I really, really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. And if you're new to the channel, not subscribed yet, and you're enjoying the content, make sure to smash that subscribe button and click on the notification bell. You would really, really help me out by doing that. You actually would. And thank you guys so extremely much for subscribing. We recently hit the 5,000 subscribers, the 5K, which is absolutely, absolutely insane. Anyways, that will be all for now. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.